So, so in the past, in the past, we have talked often about the idea of Polybius as a Shin Megami Tensei demon. Yes, it's one of our favorite things to just bring up for no good reason. We decided to like expand upon that idea as well as throw in uh like Polybius's inferior brethren. <laughs> <laughs> and like maybe this will be a thing that we do more of in the future uh we have a collection of uh internet oddities and creepy boys uh creepy pastas urban legends uh weird occasional weird uh, just stuff yeah. and uh we're gonna we're gonna try to like brainstorm how would they be in a shin megami tensei game like how would they be in the gameplay if there'd be like some if they could get a fucking story attached to them in some way i feel like uh snt4 did a really good job of that just giving a lot of demons their own little uh side mission to hand yeah. to do they never, it didn't feel like there was a wasted demon so or at least to a degree yeah so we're gonna work under the assumption that the demon will not only be included but get some kind of, like, highlight quest (laughs) or presence. And uh, while we don't have an artist, it could be interesting to talk about, like, how they would probably be interpreted visually based on only off of our own descriptions. Then artists can draw what they would look like based on our descriptions. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's a... It's uh, it's the uh, it's the Game Grumps animated hustle where you say <laughs> things and then people then turn it into content that's real. <laughs> so let's start things off with uh, the with our go-to Polybius. My boy Polybius. So Polybius is a not quite haunted arcade machine, but one with a lot of mystique around it. Yes, it is. Uh, attributed to the company Sinish Lotion, which is, which loosely translates to to remove senses. That's one of my favorite parts of like the Polybius lore is the idea that a company would like name themselves something so malicious and then make a thing like that does based on thing. that malicious intent. <laughs> yeah, it's like evil and, mind control. The company. <laughs> yeah, and it has ties to the government or the Men in Black. Uh, it was, I uh, believe, set up. Uh, do you remember the what was the state it was set up in? I don't remember the state. But it was just like uh, one of the smaller states with like a. Yeah, it wasn't like a very heavily populated. It wasn't like a Los Angeles or like a New York or something. Yeah, it was somewhere out in like the the boonie or the sticks, and like the the entire point, at least that people assume, was to test mind control supplement or. Mind control technology, or uh, the the game gave off something that messed with the brain when you played it. Yeah, and there's all these ties, these conspiracy ties. The idea that like the U.S. government made it, and then it was related to like MK Ultra, which was a real thing that the government did, where they looked into like mind control and LSD effects on people and stuff like that. Yeah. So the government does have a history of doing that kind of stuff, like not surprisingly. Hmm. As for it as a demon in a Shin Megami Tensei game, I feel like uh, you definitely need to work with the name Sinus Lotion in some way. Oh yeah, like every aspect should be taken into account when working on a demon design. Mm Mm-hmm. So, what the visual that I've had envisioned in my head for a while was like a imagine a gargoyle with its hands bound and at the top of the arm binding is an arcade stick like some buttons Mm. interesting and then at its head its eyes and ears would be covered up by uh tv monitors just a bunch of screens that's very that's very persona 4 uh, yeah, basically, like, the stack of TVs that you, that's associated with Persona 4, just, like, yeah. imagine all of those start magnetizing to his head. Mm. And, uh, each of them would have, like, a, would have its own, like, 
human face displaying on the screen contrasting oh, with the spooky. demonic design it would, it would be a tall imposing figure with a box like lower body because mm -hmm. it, its lower body is just the lower part of an arcade machine it's probably even a it's probably even a quarter slot so would it be off screen kind of like the teddy boss fight uh i'd imagine so all right that's good yeah the, the, the part of the demon that doesn't actually matter as much you don't need to show it for its skills, uh, do are we going to count uh, psychic and nuclear as elements? Ah, uh, might as might as well. Yeah, because those haven't been introduced into a mainline Shin Megami Tensei game. Well, I mean, modern that? one, not modern ones. Really? I know that they weren't in uh, SNT4 or Apocalypse. That's true. Though, since they were added to modern Persona games, I would imagine that that would carry over. Yeah. So they would have a lot of uh, mental status condition type moves, like uh, like silence, Tentara fru. Yeah, as well as uh, uh, mind element battles. I imagine it being a not quite late game, but like around mid, level... like mid late game, yeah, like forties ish. Yeah, and it would probably not be its own like independent demon. It would be. So it would be associated with like one of the groups in the game, one of the like uh, what the divine creepypasta powers? Not not quite the divine powers, but like one of the human groups. It's running around. Oh, okay. Like uh, like S like Four had like the the hunters and the samurai. I could just see like some rogue faction working with uh, demons like Belibius. The spooky investigators. Led, led by chills. Yes, led by <laughs> led by Master <laughs> Chills. My name is Chills, and I'm a devil. Summoner. I think we had a conversation like that before about the idea of one of the like one of the returning characters throughout the game who keeps changing up his demons to different uh like spooky shit. Is just the guy who sounds and looks like Chills. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, I do also uh. There is one thing that I would definitely want to include for the uh, creepypasta category of demons. Mm -hmm. And that's something like the uh, like the myths of Shin Megami Tensei 4, where they can only be obtained through fusion accident. Mm. Ooh, that'd be strong. So like if you get one. Yeah, I, I like that idea that they're like a whole like race of demons. Mm -hmm. Oh, what would they be called? I, I, I don't know what they'd be called. <laughs> Honestly, but I like the idea of this category. All right. Uh, how about uh, Arpanet demons? Arpanet. Arpanet was the original name for the internet. That was the Advanced Research Project Agency Network, or ARPA. The Arpanet demons. You could just call them ARPA demons. ARPA demons. Ooh, that's really that's really really strong. <laughs> Oh man, come on, Atlas! Like, give us some jobs already. <laughs> Hire these men. <laughs> we we have like a a high uh, render of fucking Polybius and a grassy field in Unreal Engine Four <laughs> and the at the, the, the grassy the, knoll, the, <laughs> the grassy knoll <laughs> of this, and then you, like in the corner, it's like four FPS. All right, so the next next up is tied to Polybius but vastly inferior. Oh, Haunted yeah, so. cartridges or gamer ghosts. <laughs> yeah, the the idea for this one came about because a lot of creepypastas nowadays are about some sort of haunted cartridge or some sort of uh, creepy being floating around. You got like Pokemon Black, you have Ben Drowned, you have all these really popular ones, but you can't really take those and convert them by themselves into demons. So I thought of the idea of just the haunted cartridge. Something, a, 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 uh, sort of ghost who goes around and creates these things. And he's just this schlubby loser who kind of looks like, uh, <laughs> that, you know that fat angel Yu-Gi-Oh card? Uh, I, I forget what it's called, but like, <laughs> just like a schlubby kind of like looking like in his late twenties, early thirties, like Japanese man huddled over a Famicom and he has like the the ghost uh, headband. Oh, what's that called? The ghost headband. You know, with like, like the, 
the, the one thing that, uh, Yeah. I imagine him having, like, hair that, like, really shaded his face, but you see some beady red eyes under it. Some hyper-realistic beady red <laughs> eyes. Oh, and I, I like to... No, uh, I always saw him with, like, these big, thick, like, salaryman glasses. Like, <laughs> just the ultimate level... Like, this is the... Fu like, you want a fusion accident for Polybius... This is like your regular fusion accident that you get, and you go, "Oh, what the hell is this? This is garbage." And so, I, so this would be like some early game ass. Boot. Oh yeah, this is like ten, like level ten, maybe at, at its highest five. Depending, actually, a lot of SMT games don't really. Actually, they do start you out at one. Mm -hmm. But to say they only they start you at around five, but that's like when the tutorial ends, they set you out. But, uh... Slime tends to be, like, level 1 or 2. Yeah, so around slime level, maybe, like, high-end slime. Because it... I, <laughs> this poor man. It will it will probably have, like, skills around uh, debuffing, as all it does is go out and, like, haunt cartridges. You see, I imagine it ha being able to inflict the paralysis status because of the common trope of... I, I'm... I, I wanted to get up, but I couldn't. I had to but keep I could, playing, I kept playing the game. The, game. the ghost game. <laughs> Ooh, inst okay, not paralysis. Rage. <laughs> it, it, it... Gamer ghost is going to turn you into the angry video game. The, ga the gamer yeah. ghost may, may, may make you have a heated gamer moment. He, he just goes around and inflicts this status condition. Uh, and he has, like, probably very basic spells, like, Whatever demon you use to fuse him, you'd probably be able to give him, like, one of the low-end versions of that. So if you have, like, a, f uh, a demon with Agi, you could probably give him an Agi. Like, he doesn't have any element associated with him, and is probably weak to most. Yeah. And null to none. No, no, he's null to psychic. You can't fix him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just this idea. Uh, also, like, a, a fun idea I had for the design. This is just another one is, uh... You know how, like, people used to blow into cartridges? Yeah. It's like him blowing his ghost smoke into a cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> Holding the copy of, like, a, a, like a, a totally not an N64 cartridge, but, like, legally distinct enough. Mm. That's, that's really powerful. The next one on the list is Topas slash a Topomancer. I what We... It's we definitely want to include Tulpas on the list because they are a very interesting uh modern internet phenomena with connections to something that's like more real. Yeah. It's connected to Oh, I'd have to read I'd have to double check. It's not Tibet it's a Tibetan. Yeah, it's a Tibetan thing. Thing. And uh, a lot of it, a lot of it now originates from people being lonely and wanting fictional characters. I remember back when, like, My Little Pony was big. The hot thing was like, "Let me make my Rainbow Dash Tulpa." <laughs> so here's, so here is the uh, concept that we eventually came upon. So you know how, uh, so uh, tulpas are like aspects of your mind that you have manifested into a super imaginary friend yeah and a lot of the accounts are not great yes so because of how painful they are to conjure as well as their connection to the human mind uh the idea that uh, we had for it was what if personas were just actively <laughs> shitty to you like you know you know how adachi and Takuya, like, writhe in pain when they summon their personas. Yeah. Imagine Adachi, like, holding his head and screaming in pain to summon his persona, but instead of Magatsu Izanagi, it's just the night. It's Rainbow it's Dash. It's a nightmare horse. <laughs> it's a nightmare horse. <laughs> and uh, the uh, another idea attached to that is when you fight these, these Tulpamancers, uh, they have the a rare status condition that they can inflict onto you which uh makes you kind of shittier but gives you it but it it also gives you a bonus that you wouldn't get a, uh originally and that they can inflict the tulpa status condition onto you and which, they will they will actively they will 
induce a Foster's Home scenario <laughs> in which they push their imaginary friend onto you. And, that's and, now, you... and now you have the Tulpa, and your, your abilities and your skills are locked. So imagine if you, like, built a really... I'll use Flynn as an example, or you can give Flynn, like, a bunch of cool skills. This shit's all locked now. Now you're stuck with, like, the... Whatever skills the Tulpa had. Yeah, like, uh... If, if you were fighting a Tulpa that was the equivalent of Pixie, uh, I would imagine there'd be, like, maybe 20 of them to get variety. Like, two to three for each, right. like, all high right. end. This is under the assumption that we have, like, like, Tulpas are a recurring thing that we are fighting throughout the game. Which would kind of be fucked, because this would basically, because of how we describe them as Persona, but <laughs> shitty... This would make one of the recurring antagonists you are fighting throughout the game a bunch of bitter Persona characters that want to <laughs> get rid of their get rid of Persona and make it your problem. I mean, you could perceive it like that. I mean, it could just be a game because, like, we're already talking about like mind control and weird ghosts, so it's not too out of the question to say that there are people having bad encounters with paranormal things that are attaching themselves to concepts like tulpas. And, I and the tulpa is a mental projection of something that she wanted rather than something that is you, to a degree. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you could find that difference, but yeah, it's almost directly just fuck Persona. <laughs> Get this out of me. And then, then, then they say Persona is your problem? Persona is your problem now and runs away. <laughs> I'm not sure about it as a status condition, though it does sound hilarious. <laughs> I, I really like the concept of it as a status condition because having to cure Tulpa sounds like just like a fun thing. Like you could probably carry around like a, like 99 like anti-Tulpa stones and you just rub it on your head and it goes away. <laughs> but like, ah uh, yes, the new new age new age new age healing medicine. <laughs> <laughs> but I I like. That, that's one of my favorite things that SMT... That, that, that's also what the series is known for for a little bit, is that it's a series where status conditions mattered versus mm -hmm. other RPGs where they really didn't. So mm -hmm. it's been a while since we've had like a really interesting status condition. So one that that's changes cool. gameplay, I think, is really neat. All right. And like, uh, you could also argue that you could create an interesting like single-player run, the Tulpa run, where you get a Tulpa <laughs> at the beginning and you have to now run through the game. you're just the world's worst Persona user. And then, like, you, you're fighting fucking YHVH2 with his thousand, like, <laughs> head combination, and you're casting Agi through a shitty version of Pixie. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. If the Tulpas are not all different nightmare horses, it's not accurate to the modern portrayal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Hey, the, after after its evolution from there, it moved on to X, where people were creating Tulpas of Steven Universe characters as well, Flay. Ah, oh, shit, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Do we just need to have, like, ten different flavors of the Tulpa? I, I, well, I mean, like, I was like... like That'd actually be kind of cool, if it's if it's like a demon that has a different different sort of appearance. Oh, yeah, that, that's the idea, uh, or at least that was my idea for the Tulpa Mancers. They, as you progress through the game, these people are getting worse and worse, where you have, like, more people going like, Hey, I mean... This Topa thing sounds interesting. I'll create my favorite character. And they were a little bit stronger than, like, the homeless people you're beating up with Topas earlier. Because they, they had, like, aspirations of a childhood. And so... So, yeah. so wait, 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 wait. So there is a... To so, in this hypothetical uh, Shin Megami Tensei game with the internet inf we have the faction of uh, paranormal, paranormal investigator mans led by chills <laughs> and a tulpa cult <laughs> no okay the tulpa cult i imagine works a lot like strega where it's just a bunch of fucking guys who are going around like man a bunch of fucking dudes from x just going around like yo this shit could be real though let's just start <laughs> like doing shit yeah, and we need to listen not only can they be real this can be your defense against the demons, but, like, this is actively hurting you. Oh, yeah, the, I forgot to mention that part of the status condition is, like, the spells that you get, 
no, not only drain your MP, but also your health. Like, it's actively... The cost worse. is doubled. <laughs> the cost is doubled, costs health. It's and an actively it's worse way of time. fighting. But, for someone who had no chance, it is kind of helpful. While being harmful, it is a bit of a benefit. Because the person who had only physical skills might have an Agi or a, a Zeo now. I like the I, I I'm still picturing Adachi with the night with the fucking nightmare pony <laughs> behind him. Get away, bitch! I regret making my Fluttershy. <laughs> uh, next, you want to take the next one, Nick? Yeah, sure. All right. So, next up we have SCP-173, the statue. Um, there's just like s such a long history of different SCPs. So I assume the logic is you just go with the most like popular one, yeah. or the most well-known yeah, one. I yeah, I think if we made an entire list of SCP characters, that would just like nullify the idea of taking the big internet. Like, like we could, we could. It was either the statue or the really strong lizard, and the really strong and... lizard. Oh, that thing is nonsense. Yeah, that, that's the... I, it's the also, really, oh... really strong lizard just absorbs everything and regenerate three, and it's like. Yeah, that's a little boring. So the statue is a lot more interesting. So what would you do with the statue? Um, okay, so here's the thing I think about SCPs is that you can't just recreate the SCP, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. You have to you have to be different about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, the statue isn't even itself an original idea. Yeah, I think it's just some picture a guy took. Well, it's a picture of something. a guy took, and it was literally given the same, like, supernatural powers as an enemy from Doctor Who, so... Oh really? Yeah, it's yeah. just the weeping angels from Doctor Who. It's the one where you don't, where you have to keep looking at it, and if you stop looking at it, they they snap your neck. <laughs> Which uh, man, that thing is brutal. Why is it always going for the next snap? <laughs> like, what about dude? What, what what a dexterous statue, where it's like, it's not going to just beat you up with its strong stone body. It's specifically grabbing your head and twisting. And it's one swift motion, too. This thing's, like, quick and agile. Like, my god. Like, isn't it... Didn't they also, like, subject it to torture to a degree to see how durable it was? Also, for some reason, it's, it's holding still gets messy. <laughs> and we don't know how that happened. Yeah, he poo-poos, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> stinky. <laughs> Poopy. <laughs> Guys, I think the statue made a poopy. Uh, all right, so how would you uh, go about putting this in a Shin Megami Tensei game? Okay, um, I think physical attacks are a must, mm -hmm. but it's going to be like, how is this thing physically attacking? Like, I kind of like the idea of it not having arms. Like, it's just some weird mystical... <laughs> Maybe folks have a fucking picture of him as a peanut. <laughs> Oh, and now somebody's calling me. Go, leave me alone, phone. I'm talking about the the SCP, the peanut. <laughs> so would this have a unique gameplay gimmick to it at all? Uh, Where maybe the more you attack it, it has a natural body-like effect that could in induce the blind uh, status ailment? I think and that it just tries to inflict blind on you. And its attacks get really strong if you're under under blind. Yeah, like if you if you come into the battle with a blind status condition, it targets you first, and like, does more damage with its special like neck snap. <laughs> Helen <laughs> Kel Helen Keller killer. <laughs> Man, imagine if you came in and this and the first thing you're like, oh, what the hell is that? The the statue. Oh, well, I mean. That name does it. And then it's like, it gets its first hit and it's called Next Snap and it just kills one of your party members in one hit. It's like, what the fuck? Oh, he was blinded, shit! Any, uh, any of the things that you'd throw onto it? Uh, I kind of like the idea of incorporating its poo-poo <laughs> into, like, the equation. <laughs> like, it has a spe like a debuff Maybe. attack that's that's called, like, the poo-poo or whatever. Maybe the stinky poo -poo. It just really, really fucks with people's, uh, like, hit rate. Ooh, that's actually really strong. It's just this thing that, like, every turn it, it has, like, is, like, stinky attack. <laughs> stinky. And then what it does is, like, it increases its evasion while also, like, decreasing your, uh, your evasion. 
So yeah, it's kind of like a uh, red capote from the matador. Oh fuck, that's really the strong. The reddish brown stuff. The reddish brown substance on the floor is the com species in blood. The origin of these materials is unknown. The enclosure must be cleaned on a bi-weekly basis. <laughs> oh man, you gotta kill this thing fast, or else you're not gonna be able to hit shit, and you're gonna constantly get blinded. It just spawns. It's not even actively like shitting on the floor. It's just causing it to amass around it. What the fuck? Why? That's such a weird addition to it that just makes yeah. it all the more eerie. As a creepy boy, <laughs> I, I I like it because that's actually that plays very well with the idea of it having to inflict a status condition before it can actually hurt you. And it probably like fucking resists or nullifies physical. Yeah, like uh, he, and he, it also does nullify bullets, resist physical. Okay, I can agree with that. And uh, it's. And how far in the game would this be? I'm, I'm picturing level 30-ish. Yeah, especially if it's going to start throwing out, like, instant death attacks. Mm -hmm. Level 30, level 40-ish. Maybe 35. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. You want to do the Skinwalkers too? So I know you like the skin, yeah, sure. skinny boys. Yeah, okay, I like Skinwalkers a lot because, like, anytime anybody tells a story about a Skinwalker, it's really funny because <laughs> there's always some fucking rednecks involved. <laughs> And they always they always describe the smell, and it's always like, "Yeah, that skinwalker smelled like rust and pee." <laughs> and it's, I love skinwalkers a lot, a lot. They're really terrifying. But yeah, uh, skinwalkers are basically I don't even know what like to classify them as because they're like who knows what the fuck they are. They're cryptids, I guess. That like they, they're obviously not real. Mm -hmm. I what the government wants you to yeah, think. I was about to say, mm -hmm. bro, that's what a skinwalker would say. Yeah. They're obviously yeah, exactly. not real. Sure, right. We're not real. <laughs> <laughs> and even if we were, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> but skinwalkers are said to have the ability to take on the shape of, like, different animals, humans sometimes. Um, they're just very spooky. Was Shisha in SMT4 Apocalypse a skinwalker when he was Flynn? I... <laughs> Ooh. I guess you could consider him a skinwalker. That was pretty skinwalkery what he did, too. That was very skinwalkery. Yeah. So imagine, like, yeah, you're, you're just, you're with a party member, and then they they go all, uh, sh uh Shueisha. Wow, no. Shueisha? Shueisha? <laughs> Shueisha. <laughs> she, uh, Shueisha. They start, they, they start, uh... Publishing oh, manga right in front of you. <laughs> like, this is, like, he, never, he never did that. He hated manga. <laughs> I think my favorite of those Skinwalker stories is the pizza delivery ones. It's like, this dude ordered a pizza on the edge of town, and I just said, fuck that. <laughs> what type of stats do you think it would have? Um, probably, like, pretty high agility, because Skinwalkers, like, nobody can ever capture a fucking Skinwalker. That's true. It, it's also, I don't think, like, many people catch them on camera, either. Uh, how would you go about its physical appearance, as well? Oh, jeez. I mean, the thing about Skinwalkers is that there's so many ways you can interpret them. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of picturing this creature that's like half humanoid, mm -hmm. like it's like creating a human out of it, but the rest of it is like this white uh mass that's kind of like torn up. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time in Skinwalker stories, they'll be like, Yeah, there's this wolf, and it was like half of its fucking body had scars and shit or whatever. I like that. Those Skinwalkers get fucked up, man. So it's growing a person out of it, like, a yeah, tumor. I like the idea that it's like it. Yeah, it, like, grows a person. Ooh, that's really strong. And the rest of it kind of kind of dissolves into the person. Maybe, like, as it's growing the person, because when I was picturing it, I imagine, like, you know those, like, semi-humanoid-looking monsters from, like, the early SMT games, like, Zombie Cop and stuff? Yeah. Like, um, something kind of like that, where it's, like, a person sliding their skin on, right? Where it's, like, Ooh. like you can see their nose poking out through, like, uh, the uh, side of their cheek as their actual nose is kind of, like, hanging flaccid to the side, sliding the face on, right? Oh, I like that idea. So maybe That's a massive. mixture That's of that, spooky. like, it's growing the skin and kind of putting it on. You caught this thing mid-dress up? Oh, how, how embarrassing. <laughs> oh, jeez, my ass isn't on. Oh, I'm blushing. <laughs> oh, tee hee. Tee <laughs> One second. Uh, no human, don't look at me, haha. <laughs> Unless <laughs> there, there, you could easily make a fucking side quest for skinwalkers in an SMT game. Suddenly, a group of twins start showing up, and everyone's like, "I don't know who the fuck that is." 
I, I also like the idea that it's like a quest that you don't realize has started, where like one of your party members just starts acting kind of weird, and eventually you figure out, oh, wait a minute. Oh, what? This, this motherfucker's a skinwalker. What was the name of that town that, uh, uh, it was the town that spawned that, I think it was the, the one Nazi scientist was hiding in, that had just a huge sudden influx of twin children. Mm, I have no idea what you're talking about. That sounds really scary. Uh, it was, uh, the Mangala got away and he was hiding in a town and it had like this huge, like, like really odd for its time, like amount of twins in it. And then, like, imagine going to a town with, like, a similar theme, and then after you leave it, one of your party members is different. Mm. Like, huh, I don't remember, I don't remember, uh, I'll just throw Navar out there, because he's on my mind right now. I remember <laughs> Navar- Yo, this is an advanced skinwalker if he's taking the form of a ghost. Oh, okay, <laughs> no, it's, it's Samurai Navar. <laughs> that, yeah. that, oh, okay. <laughs> don't, don't worry, we don't, we don't have to worry and about that. Like, which is extra weird, because Navar's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Navar having. Why is he null to lightning and now suddenly weak to wind? What's going on? Oh, that'd be interesting if like the elements change. Like, uh, uh, like he starts doing attacks he doesn't. He does not have. Navar is confused and strikes the party. What? No, he's not. What are you doing, game? Fucking shitty broken game. Ass. Ass. I'm gonna go beat up Navar in real life. But like, right, so how how do you advance this quest that once you accidentally started it? Um, I guess you would have to go back to the location where, like, right after you went there, weird shit started happening. Yeah, like, as soon as you notice that one of your party members is different, if you go back and start talking to the people around, like, you'll start picking up, like, little news clips, like, Hey, yeah, so my, my cousin disappeared, he came back and he was acting weird, and he went here, and he went here, and, like... At, Everyone keeps pointing out like a certain location, and when you go there, you get like a huge spike in increased chances of encountering a skinwalker out there. And then when you encounter one, you're like, oh, that, hmm. Go back to like maybe like the local shaman and be like, hey, I think my friend's local possessed. <laughs> it's SMT. I mean, every every uh, upstanding town's got to have a shaman. I mean, it's an SMT game. You try to tell me that there's not like a tent that just says local shaman on it? Like, to have a town in SMT, you need a post office and a shaman outpost. Sometimes they're in the same building. <laughs> the government has issued shamans now. Ah, oh, shit. My government issued shaman is... <laughs> is on break. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> hey, buddy, look at the sign, and it says closed at 2 p.m., and you're like, What important government facility closes before most people wake up? Mm. And then, uh, then you have to deal with that. And then you have to start scheduling... You gotta stand in line at the DMV to get your friend unskinwalkered. So it's a real process. Wait, wait. So your your friend's not like hidden somewhere. Oh no, they no, are. your friend is hidden somewhere. But you gotta like, you gotta unskinwalker the skinwalker. Yeah. You gotta you gotta have your Scooby Doo reveal. You gotta you gotta de skin the skinwalker. I like the idea of them having like you uh the skinwalker and your the not skinwalker party member having a tussle, <laughs> and you have to decide which one to I don't kill. Know which one to shoot. Like, uh, and one of them has, like, one of them has a clearly wrong face. <laughs> <laughs> and you start asking them quite. Oh, you, you figure it out the same way they figure out the clone thing in, uh, fucking 4 Arena. Where you ask him a really complicated question, and one of them answers it correctly, and the other one goes, I don't fucking know! Why would I know that? <laughs> like, ah, that's the real one. So, I can't, I, I'm into, I'm into Skinwalker Town. Skinwalker town. Some refer to it as Le Skinwalker. I wanna I wanna see the Skinwalker shopkeep. Isn't that just the mannequins? I mean ones that are like actively malicious towards you as a shopkeeper. Like they're sell they're selling you faulty medicines. Oh, that'd be strong. And, oh and, and, and maybe a, and a loof stone. Not a live stone, like a... <laughs> a loof, loof stone. Yeah. yeah, and if you use those items, the per like, it raises the chances of who's going to get taken when you finally leave the town. Because there'll probably be an event somewhere where everyone splits up for a moment and then they come back together. Like, you're never going to get taken, but... So you mm -hmm. can increase the odds of who gets cha uh, taken by just going out and being like, all right, I bought, like, 30 uh, pissins. <laughs> which, are po which are shitty potions. Uh, you, Navar, go fight those demons real quick. 
here's some here's some shitty pitions, and now his percentage is like he's like 93% chance gonna get skinwalkered. And you can metagame your skinwalk like uh, the speed run is to get a uh, is to get one of the characters taken. Skinwalk percent. Skinwalk percent. <laughs> Uh, as for, like, a... Would a summonable skinwalker have, like, a specific look to them? Uh, it would with probably them? just be, like, the the generic skinwalker design with putting on the skin. Maybe, like, you can get variants that just are randomly generated. Like, this one's putting on, like, an old woman face, or this one's putting on a young man face. Like, and Yeah, that'd be cool if every time you summon them, they, they're, in a, they're making different skin. This one's yeah. putting on a redneck face. This one's also putting on a redneck face. I'm starting to sense a pattern. <laughs> yeah, a, oh man, there's a lot of redneck faces. That that oh no, then you then you get into the bad situation where it's like a shiny hunt. Like oh, he only this the he only spawns the female redneck every three point three times you summon him. <laughs> that's a that's a one in forty five million chance or whatever. <laughs> forty five million. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Shin Megami Tensei games haven't really had, like, visual distinctions. Usually those are considered their own class of demon. Yeah. Like, like for the angels that were a different color in uh, SNT4 Apocalypse, they were just straight up different demons, and one of them was an endgame demon. Yeah, the angels with the white wings versus the angels with the blue wings. The, you, you don't want to be on a blue wing angel. You want a white wing angel. Right. Next up... On the list is Red Room. All right, Red Room is one. It was the first one I thought of when we, I was trying to come up with ideas for this, and it's it's based off of the the Red Room Internet Urban Legend of a a deep web uh, website where you get to watch acts of violence acted out on a person that you can pay to enter. And it's this big scary thing that actually has never been proven to really exist. All red rooms that have been seen in some capacity have been proven to be either hoaxes or cut off right before anything happens. And so the idea I had for red room as a monster or a demon design is like it, uh, a dude kind of like shackled to a chair with like uh, mandibles around his uh, hands and kind of like the Persona 5 like 2014 chair. Mm -hmm. And the person sitting there has, like, a, a bag over their head, so you never see them. And, like, they're just kind of, like, shivering and shaking. They kind of look like, uh... Oh, there's one, like, shadow design in 3 that kind of reminds me of it. I think it's in 4 as well. But it, it just looks like this guy ready for torture in a, in a degree. They even have, like, he, like a little uh, detail is, like, whenever he... You know, like, some demons have, like, movement to their design in some way. Like... He's yeah. when he breathes, you can see the bag kind of go in and out of his uh, mouth to highlight that there's this, this weird thing underneath. So like that—that's the first thing I came up with. Maybe he has like a red aura to him, and so I imagine he would have like I—I can't—I couldn't decide if he would have weakness or uh, resistance to physical because the point is you're supposed to go in and beat this person up. So I was like uh, resistance, but like. When you go in and beat them up, they're supposed to die, so shouldn't they be weak to it? I, I like the idea of giving him the weakness. Yeah, I, I like that as well. Maybe he'd have scars on his design, but, like, he'd just look like what a Red Room person would look like. And I'd imagine he'd appear, like, 20, 25 levels. Mm -hmm. And he would probably have, like, basic debuff, like, spells, because it's supposed to be, like, all oh, this horrible, gruesome thing that you're witnessing. And then you go fight Cthulhu and you're fine. Uh, I see this being an, a random encounter in the area for the next demon on the list, the Deep Web itself. Yes, the Deep Web was... It, it spawned from an idea of trying to come up with these. And the idea is it's this hole in the ground, which you can kind of see into. Uh, I forget the name of the, the specific breed, but it's kind of like... A, I believe it's called a burrowing spider, which are spiders that create pit traps. And so it's just this hole in the ground that you can barely see into. But when you do, you see webbing that is made of like circuits and wires that stretch downward. And then at the very bottom of the hole, you can see two big beady red eyes. Ooh. And when you spawn in, like you never get to see what the deep web looks like, but it, 
when it's there, there's a high chance that red rooms will spawn next to the uh, deep web. And you have to take those out before you can actually hit the... Or before... I mean, you can attack the deep web, but it's it's more efficient to take out the red rooms because they debuff you. So it's just this nice little, like, combination of two demons that work together. I also just like the idea of, like, a moving hole with a really creepy thing at the bottom. A moving hole sounds kind of cartoonish, though. Uh, I mean, like... Like Looney Tunes has moving hole. <laughs> that's where yeah, Bucks Bunny lives. <laughs> but that's true, but, like, a lot of what makes things kind of, like, supernatural and strange is, like, I mean, Bugs Bunny would put on, like, suits that made him look like people. That's basically a skidwalker. Like, you can, <laughs> you can Looney Tunes any demon, honestly. Because they're supernatural. And thus, they work off some unknown logic. So, like, if you started seeing, like, a whole shift around, like, fucking Johnny's third, like, art, like, act three of Tusk, like, that shit's terrifying. That's a hole that takes all that the is pretty scary of a hole and moves it around with itself. Sorry, when you said Bugs Bunny was a skinwalker and that you could Looney Tunes any demon, I imagine Bugs Bunny dressed as June's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Why not Bugs Bunny dressed as June's mom? <laughs> he could do both. He's cool with it. <laughs> he used to be trolled, but he found a way to stop it. <laughs> uh, the next demon on the list is now Bugs Bunny. I don't care. <laughs> no. I mean, uh, next look at the name of the next demon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next demon on the list is the I Am God, based off of the a post on the export of 4chan. Or what was it be? Oh, uh, no, it was uh, X. It might have... Uh, okay, it might have started on B, but I know it immediately went to X, because X was freaking out about that. So, the story behind it was there was a file that was... There was a... Anon on 4chan was going to his uh, friend's house to check out his computer, because there were files that kept on appearing. He put it together and started to find... Uh, if you put the piece, the images that were being downloaded together, you would start to get, like, bits and pieces of a face. And this developed into a QR code, which led into the face being completed. It was a screaming red face with the text in German that translated to, I am God. So this was the uh, end result of, of the face. Yeah, and, like, you didn't get the eyes until, I think... Oh no, it was the nose that didn't come till very last, I think. And the I am God text, I believe, is hidden somewhere in the or in the darkness of that black around itself. Uh, the, what made this so in, like creepy is you got it, people who were there at the time got to watch this actually unravel for a bit. It was like a fun little ARG trying to put things together, and like the Anon would come in and out and be like, "Yeah, so uh, my friend also took this video," and as he took the video, like. The dude's just walk around his house, and there's a moment where he passes his window, and this black face or or this red face kind of like comes into frame, and then instantly leaves frame, and it it looks it, the way it was handled was fantastic, which left a really strong impact on people because this is the first time like X had like a hit. So like additionally, uh, a lot of people on the thread reported issues with their computer after seeing the image, but that is likely bogus. I'm gonna uh, put that was, one in the bogus. There was the situation where it had a phone number that mm -hmm. you could text, and the people who texted it started getting odd results back, like pictures of dolls with their eyes cut out and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it was just this creepy sort of, not an ARG, but it reminded me a lot of an ARG, of people assembling something and then watching as like horror unfolded before their eyes. Uh if you look at the if you look at the face, you'll notice that it bears a strong resemblance. <laughs> and here goes all the horror God, out the window. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> However, it doesn't just resemble Doug Walker. Uh, with how it's with how its face is fragmented, it reminds me a lot of the concept art for uh in SMT Apocalypse <laughs> with the lines across his face. So the idea of, like, not quite, but a imitation of him 
being formed on computers is something that I feel would be very Shin Megami Tensei like. Oh, that, and that's, like Shin Megami, that's Shin Megami yeah. Tensei as fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's a boss in, I'm pretty sure he was in SMT1, who's like a computer program that's actually just God's face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a uh, fake. Uh, yeah. So the idea so, that humans would be like, I've created, and he thinks that he is this ultimate. It's the demiurge, but mm -hmm. made by man. So what I'm what I'm pitching here is at the end of so we established that there was the internet spooky X board faction. This would yeah. be this would be the end of their arc. This would be their big. This would last. be what Chills is using at the very last fight. Yes, this is this is number one. <laughs> number one, I, I am, am God. God. This is my strongest demon. <laughs> Prepare to face my wrath. This is this is chills. This is what chills was building up to. This is what got him to amass followers. At Dylan is chill and YT. <laughs> <laughs> you want to download a god? <laughs> <laughs> Go to my Instagram. It would pretty much just be a red with uh, who's a bit more emotive. Based oh, off yeah. of the fact that he's screaming, and I imagine it'd be, Walker face. <laughs> it'd be with a uh, with a more sadistic personality, kind of mm -hmm. like. How is that possible? <laughs> okay, the de like the demiurge, where it believes itself to be the like even hot like this super high being. Oh, so this thing he thinks it's even hotter shit than the actual god it's based yes, on. Yes, it thinks that it like because it was just programmed with you are god, and mm -hmm. then it's like. Like, yes, I am. I, I'm. I'm the best. I'm fucking great. That god, piece of shit. I'm god. And it. And like Yifjit in uh, Yifjit in SNT4 Apocalypse at least pretends to be like I, I let you guys do things, <laughs> and then you then you call him out. But this guy's not even pretending. <laughs> yeah, if you if you try to if you try to roll up on this guy and started to call him a punk bitch and a liar, he would not feel sad. He would just get, just go la 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 and no. get more angry. He'd you'd yell just, at you. In he'd anger. get stronger. You'd buff him by trying to knock down his <laughs> ego. Yeah, like the right option is just to fucking ignore him. <laughs> like you know SNT four and Apocalypse sometimes yeah. the demons would like you know like, hey uh do you, you want to keep fighting? Do you really believe in yourself? And then you're like, yes. And then he's like, whoa, he believes in himself. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I lost my accuracy. Yeah. Like, this guy, no matter what you say to him, he's going to get buffed. You just got to ignore him. <laughs> uh, as for its skill set, I just imagine, like, standard endgame demon skills. Yeah, you could have the, the full load. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the Meiji Jidolwen. Maybe, maybe his own unique severe almighty skill oh yeah definitely his own severe almighty skill one that would probably i, I keep going back to it and inflicts the status condition <laughs> okay here's okay i don't want to go with inflicts the status condition but what about an what about almighty spells that if it would hit a weakness is treated as the weakness Ooh. element? That, oh that's, that's busted really busted oh i like yeah it. Oh, what if, like, okay, this thing takes, like, a lot of the busted mechanics from earlier SMT games, or just <laughs> SMT games beforehand, so this thing will hit you with its almighty spell, then fucking smirk, which is the only use of smirk in this game, and it will just start <laughs> kicking your ass. That'd be really funny. If he just has, like, a unique smirk that nobody else gets. <laughs> Well, e like, even if you added smirk in the you give him bigger smirk that can't be taken away. <laughs> He's Man, so if fucking... Doug, if Doug Walker started smirking at me... <laughs> I'd be terrified. Absolutely. <laughs> but, like, ah. it, it has these buffs that can... Through its own confidence, it can give itself unremovable buffs. So the fight just gets tougher and tougher as it goes on. And when you finally defeat him, like, he separates via the JPEGs and, like slides apart like a sliding puzzle that's how that's how he moves like a sliding puzzle Ooh. i like that it's like Madarame's fight but not bad <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Next up, we have the the, the uh, big four. The big four. Like the I, I want to end this. I want to end this on like the the ones that I felt the most confidence in. <laughs> Besides Polybius, because Polybius, I want to start with a bang. And this one is probably, this next one is probably our biggest of them. Yeah. Uh, and that is the tall man himself, Slenderman. Slenderman's mythology is mixed up because of the many different interpretations of what he, what he is and what he do. I personally uh, interpret his original photos in a different way than the usual... And then, it, then he, like, ate the children, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, uh, looking at the uh, two original photos of the tall man, we have a bunch of kids just, like, walking away as he's just standing there in the back. And the one I find much more interesting, this image with a... Uh, this image of just a park setting where Slenderman is under a tree... With kids just surrounding just it. Just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. He is just hanging out with these children. The, the the creepiness of these images stems from how mundane a setting it is. So when I interpret Slenderman, I don't see him as someone who's like actively malicious. But like maybe if something bad were to happen, he doesn't have a face. But if he did, he'd be smiling about it. But you can't yeah. tell that. And I think it was you who described it this way, but, like, you feel like if you tried to do, like, to fuck with him while he was there, like, everyone would look at you like you're the weirdo? Yeah. Like, you, if you if you saw Slenderman walking down the street and you punched him because he was really tall and faceless, people would be like, Yo, what the fuck? That was that was that hey, was. Hey man, that's Slender Man. What's wrong <laughs> you, met... you? you know the scene from Spider Man to <laughs> Spider Man, where it's like, yeah, you mess with one of us, you mess with all, mess with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> they they do that for Slender Man. <laughs> but yeah. uh, he, to the average eye, he is just an ordinary, albeit weird and tall man. Yeah, and I just bit. imagine, like, his horror element comes from, like, a sort of Absol from Pokemon type thing, where if he's there, something fucked is going to happen, and it's he's probably not causing it, or maybe he is, but... So, maybe in, in this maybe in this SMT game where we have this established cult of, like, the, the X-Board followers, they aren't actually responsible for him. I like the Absol comparison where he's like not wa maybe not even wanting to cause disasters, but he's just a uh trouble just kind of follows him. Yeah. And so the cult itself is like kind of chasing like... him chasing him down and incidentally causing problems in the process. I mean like maybe they're they're uh kind of steering him into certain places and you have to steer him out. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I imagine... Inevitably like, culminating in a fight against him. Oh, because yeah. Because I imagine like, he is very much powerful. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe not even a fight that you're supposed to win, but just weaken him to a degree. <laughs> uh, a good example of this, and it's just coming off the top of my head because I've, I've recently been playing it a lot. I am at... And this is gonna be a fucking weird-ass comparison, but they're both really tall boys. Uh, Slenderman kind of is like Zora Magdaros from fucking Monster Hunter Worlds, where... He's just kind of chilling. He's vibing. And you got to like, no, this is Shibuya Square. You can't be here. Yeah, your, your chilling is uh, is causing a problem. You got to go. And it ends with him leaving his spookiest setting and going to maybe where a lot of people like to perceive him from. And that's just in the forest where like that. That's how you guide him out. That's the end of his story. That's when he stops becoming as scary. He's just. A dude in the forest at that point which mm -hmm. i think takes away a lot of his horror factor because even though he's scary just by the uncanniness of it the real horror comes from him being in mundane setting as for a boss fight against the tall man i think that incorporating the fact that he blends in to settings very easily would be an important part of it mm -hmm. um like he would just fade into crowds of demons Oh, I like that a lot, actually. 
where it's just like you, you encountered a group of demons and you, and question mark question mark question mark in the background and you need to both fight the horde and him and he is hitting you with some heavy stuff occasionally just no, no. making himself invulnerable i like the him making Impossible himself invulnerable target. Maybe he's not actively hitting you with stuff, but being around him at that, like, close in in that setting is causing disasters to happen. Like, uh, this is a dumb Inc one, but... Incidental Ashi died. <laughs> uh, accidental chain lightning. <laughs> Sometimes he throws out healing spells, and it either hits... And it's like a random chance if it hits you or the demons, because he's not trying to hurt anyone. He's just like, oh, oh geez, I'm just vibing. Stop fighting, come on. Stop her. Slenderman has no active skills. It's just a bunch of passives that cause spells to randomly go off. I like that a lot, where he's not hes not really the threat while being the biggest threat in the room. Mm-hmm. Like, like if, you, can, if, you, if you pissed off Slenderman, you feel like in one hit he would just kill you no matter what level you are. Mm-hmm. Like, he has, like... He'd be like level like seventy or eighty or whatever, and you're level and you, like twenty. I imagine this would be a bit into the game. You're like level forty at this point. Well, I mean, I think that you should get hints at him if he's going to be big. He's going to be part of this big conspiracy because it's like yeah, he is. Con he is in some way controlling event. This is this is a he is part of a an over a long series of side quests. Like, his appearances become more frequent, like, the longer you get into it. Mm -hmm. Like, he, like his spell list would just have a bunch of incidental spells that do severe damage, but you can't actively use them. They just happen when his turn comes up. Now, will he be one of those unattainable demons where you never are able to actually fuse to make him? Uh, he's, he's still part of the, he's still part of the creepy boys race. Just well, gotta get that fusion uh, accident. I, I guess. Are there certain demons that you can't get? Generally, they try to avoid those. Like, off the top of my head, I can only think of, like, Dogda. And Shesha, and... Well, I mean, this is kind of a Shesha, like, plot figure, but I guess it's fine. I guess, like, if you beat him in the story, then you can make the fusion accident happen. Well, not make it happen, but, like... He, he gives you a, then he gets he added you to the a slender stone that allows it to... A slender stone! <laughs> oh, I gotta get this Here's to Eevee! Here's the slender stone! <laughs> gotta get this to Eevee! Oh god, Eevee's become terrifying. <laughs> oh no, oh, something really fucking cute would be like if he gives you a stone and it just, it's a stone with the, the fucking operator symbol from uh, Marble Hornet scribbled into it, but at the bottom, really jagged and like ugly written is just the word friend. Aww. <laughs> and Eevee, uh. you, got the, you got the slender friend stone. <laughs> uh, I like the idea of him just being an incidental boss while there is a large crowd of, like, things that you need to take care of before you can actually reach him. And be and because of the nature of that type of boss fight, uh, you can just, you can easily say, fight him at any point. Like, uh, early game, ah, it's just like a crowd of slimes or something. A bunch of, a bunch of undead. But later game, it could be like a bunch of a bunch of uh, Metatrons. <laughs> <laughs> we are the a bunch war. of Metatrons was the most fucked thing. That apocalypse. was so. That was like a pant shitting moment. That was yeah. a pant shitting moment. You hit them with one lightning spell, like half of them melted. You're like, oh, okay, I get it now. But that, but at the same time, hitting them with that one lightning spell and seeing them go away made you feel fucking cool, didn't it? I mean, yeah, I felt like. Damn, I'm just fucking bodying Metatrons left and right. I have powered Sith lightning and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the tall that's the tall boy. And uh, visual visually, what I had pictured for him was like the typical typical tall man in a suit design. But I would include like the uh, black like the shadow children from the photo of him at the park. Just, like, looking up to him. <laughs> it's yeah, unclear like, if this is an aspect of him or just some people who are following him around. Maybe he's adjusting his tie, but that seems too much. <laughs> he, uh, he's he's head-patting one of the children. <laughs> Aww. I, I just like perceiving him as this total not-threat who's just in a bad situation. Next up is the 
have you seen this man hoax i believe that this originated on the internet yeah this is uh like an internet thing mm -hmm. have you seen this man is a, an urban legend of a drawing that was found at a psychiatrist's desk that many people report to see in their dreams but they just took a glance at it the dreams aren't generally considered to be like scary some are even considered to be good but some are considered to be nightmares yeah like but and this he, man is a benevolent figure in a way he has a very plain face it's also very distinct it, it's it's weird because the way that the hoax was set up is that it was a man it was a man's face given every feature to make him the most identifiable man possible well, when you look at him by itself, it's very distinct, but, like, I believe it was, like, the, if you cover up the bottom of his face, he looks old, cover up the top, he looks young, cover up one side, he looks like one person, cover up the other, it looks like another person, and if you mm -hmm. just, like, cover different aspects of him, he starts adapting traits of most people, you know, when if you just look at him like that, he looks so unique that it's like, I, how could I, I, I recognize something about him, but I don't know what it is. Maybe he was in a dream and I just don't remember the full details. And it was this super really creepy marketing stunt that worked amazingly well. It spread like wildfire. Yeah. The thing that's really interesting about this man is, uh, kind of this idea that you can impose like shit upon your own brain mm -hmm. and retroactively believe in something like, the whole thing about it was that 99% of people have not dreamt about <laughs> this man. But you show him a picture and you're like, man, it's so weird. A bunch of people dream about this man, blah, blah, blah. Suddenly, in the back of your mind, you're like, have I dreamt of this man? And then I'm, maybe you do. <laughs> I, I think I may have seen this man, actually, now that I think about it. And then you sleep that night, and then this man. And the funniest thing about this man's inclusion on this list is I came up with adding him in a dream about making this video. <laughs> That's so spooky, dude. Maybe he was real. Mm. So creepy. What I picture with this man is, you know how Sandman in SMT, like the Sleepy mm -hmm. Moon Man? Yeah. Yep. What if there was like a rare chance that when you encounter Sandman, you also encounter this man? And he's standing there like uh, the dude from fucking. Uh, he's uh, he just he just at he's just an addition to a regular Sandman encounter. Yeah, and like, uh, like he doesn't even have like that notable skill set. It's probably just very similar to Sandman. He he's the Sandman alt to a degree. Yeah, Sandman's Echo Fighter, <laughs> but with some uh, but with some like nice if, little additions here and there. If you use Sandman in a fusion, you have a higher chance of this fusion accident. Yeah. Like just a just Sandman, but bigger. <laughs> is With this... a bigger body and probably like one higher level spell. Yeah, maybe a unique sleep spell. Like it, like it, it sleeps you, but it also applies like a like a uh, like a secunda or a decunda on you. It, it sleeps you, but it gives you like a health boost, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not or not a health boost, like it heals you. Doesn't because... sleep do then for the recent ones? Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Never mind. I guess not a lot. Yeah, not by a lot, but it does. So just like the idea, like, like maybe he has like sleep for the enemies and it's like sleep in Deba. And then he has sleep for you and it's sleep in like a, like a little bonus. I can't imagine there being like a, a quest for this man, but I can't imagine like an NPC near where you would encounter Sandman saying something about this man to hint at him being a rare encounter for the area. I just find this man very interesting. <laughs> yeah, this man is really interesting. I think this man is, like, at least on here, the only example of something that, like, psychologically affected people, and not in, like, a Polybius way, mm -hmm. but in, like, a this man is more a creation of, like, some kind of psychosomatic induction of making him exist than anything. Which is really fucking cool. <laughs> Next up... On the list, Cicada 3301. Now, this one, uh, Medi pitched. I'm curious on what you have to say about it. Okay, so the idea comes upon just like I'm imagining like you're exploring a dungeon, and sort of like when you encounter demons in like four apocalypse and four were actually, I don't know if it was in four, but when you first meet them, they're this blur of text and like code. And then after you beat them, you get a P like you unlock what they were. 
And then, so as you're going through the dungeon, you just keep encountering these same blurs. And as they as they slowly get defeated, instead of revealing the full demon, only part of the demon is revealed. And then you get these pieces of code that you then bring to one of the final dungeons later in the game to reveal what it actually is. And it's this large cicada creature that is just, it has like the numbers on it. And by beating it, you unlock like a special item that allows you to get some sort of like maybe the the really good well, weapons at the end of the game. I don't you... imagine it being for a weapon, but because the comps now have like apps on them, I can imagine it getting you like some special combat. Oh, that's that's true. You could get like a good app for it if that's like one of the returning themes. It would give you some really good rare end game item that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And it would be something that you would have to actively be a part of during your story. Like, yeah. you, you couldn't, like, there will be dungeons that these creatures appear in that you maybe can't go back to afterwards. Like, uh, I'll just use Shibuya like, again as an example. Like, maybe if there's, like, the Shibuya Underground, but at, at the end of the Shibuya Underground uh, incident, like, it caves in and you can never go back. And so you had to encounter the cicada piece there. And... Yeah. Depending on how many dungeons in the game, you can make one binary, like maybe letter that spells out something. I think you should all. I think this should be one of those invisible side quests, like we talked about with the, uh, like we talked about earlier, where yeah. like with the skinwalkers, where you don't know when you started it, but uh, once you start it, it's something that you can continue to go down and just continue to find more and more things for. It. It's also I think like that, I don't think they should be random encounters. I think they should be scripted encounters in specific areas that are a bit obscure and maybe require some steps to get to. Maybe uh, scripted encounters that somewhat appear as random encounters to a degree. Because I want yeah. it to be integrated. Because the the point of Cicada is like you're picking up, uh, like, to be fair, there should be the first encounter of it should be very telegraphed to the player. Mm -hmm. Because the point of Cicada was they went on to, I believe it was uh, one of the, I don't remember what board it was, but they went on to 4chan and they went, hey, we're Cicada, this is a project, find us. And then they left, like, codes, and, like, that was unraveled, and, like, I only, I think, like, only, we've never seen... What if it end. shows up, what if it shows up when you talk to a certain demon? Ooh, that'd be strong. When you talk to, when you talk to the demon in these encounters. Ooh, and they hand you, like, a pamphlet, it is like... Oh, they hand you the first <laughs> part of the code. <laughs> like, hey, hey man, here, Jack, here's our Jack quest. Fro Jack Frost. You, you should take this, hell. <laughs> uh, I think the I think the idea is like they'd give you a string of numbers, which are just a binary letter, and by the end you get all of the letters, and it spells out, uh, like, uh, Ike Brukuro. Yeah, yeah, it gives you a low, it gives you an obscure like town in the game, and you go to it. And then when you're there, you encounter Cicada, and Cicada is defeated, gives you an item. I'm not sure what I would give Cicada as a boss fight. Mm -hmm. I think it would be a lot of uh, psychological attack, like psychic attacks, mm -hmm. and debuffs, going back to status conditions. <laughs> How about this? Uh, you have to find out, you have to find out its weakness because it is a barrier change boss. It changes Ooh. its weakness. I like that. So you have to uh, keep testing the weakness. It, it just. It's supposed to test you to its fullest degree, and it gives you maybe uh, an infinite money farmer or an infinite XP farmer. It's so like app. Something that would be worth the reward. And the last one we have here, you actually made a video about this in the past. I did, in, in the distant past. <laughs> the Mandela the Mandela app. effect. Which, yes. which is spelled really funkily here. It is spelled with every instance of the word, or of the letter E or A replaced with the ash uh one of the old letters in the english language or the latin language that was cut and it's mm -hmm. that a e looking thing so you can't so like when you look at it it can be read either way because i know there's some people who miss who even misspell mandela effects yeah where instead of uh effect it's affect or affect instead it's effect so i was like wouldn't it be cool if like they were all changed and this also coincidentally ties in with Baron Stein and Baron Stain because that's oh. also an EA substitution. Yeah. So you want to wrap this one up, Nick? With the Mandela Yeah, sure. Um, 
Yeah, to briefly explain what the Mandela Effect is, it's um, a phenomenon where people will misremember certain things on like an abnormally large scale. Like it's named after Nelson Mandela, who apparently people in thought that he died in prison in the 80s. Uh, I think that was a little bit before like my time, but like our generation's big Mandela Effect is the Berenstain Bears, Berenstain Bears thing, to where everybody seems to think they were called the Berenstain Bears. Like, that's how I remember them being called. But apparently they are, in fact, the Berenstain Bears. <laughs> so it's it's just an interesting, like, very large-scale, uh, like, raw, mistaken memory sort of phenomenon. It's very interesting. Yeah. But it plays on the idea of how weak the human memory really is. And how we like to fill in to to when we remember things, we fill in gaps of our memory with stuff. So, a after a while, like there will be like just large collective false memories that when you actually look into it, like it gets unraveled. the The reason it's in the Nelson Mandela effect is because it was at a skeptic convention where they were talking about Nelson Mandela, and everyone up at the panel of judges said that he died in prison, and they were told, well, "No, he's alive, like right now." And he's, like, a big figure. And, like, wow, maybe we shifted into a parallel universe. <laughs> and yeah, that's another big aspect of it is the idea that, like, there there are certain universes where, like, it was called the Berenstain Bears or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we, we live in the Berenstain universe, or we were from that universe. We, we like, shifted over here. Okay, and, uh, here's something I want to pitch for the Mandela Effect boss. The Mandela Effect is not a demon. However... It is a dom it is a dungeon slash domain. All the demons there are returning demons from past Shin Megami Tensei games that have had their weakness changed, and they use the <laughs> old weaknesses slash resistance. Okay, but the way that you keep it like really weird mm -hmm. is that when that as you go through, those weaknesses change. Oh God, my voice cracked. Uh, yeah. Those weaknesses change, and then they go back sometimes. So you never That would be really annoying. You never know like which version you're fighting. Maybe mm -hmm. there'd be like a subtle subtlety to it. Like uh when you when you encounter the pixie down there, she has like slightly different hair. Hmm. It's like, ah, oh, that's that that's the fucking that's nineteen that's nineteen ninety eight pixie right there. It uses an older sprite. Oh man. Yeah, imagine imagine just like take it like recruiting like a Baron a Berenstein universe pixie. <laughs> I met the the real fucked one was like when you go down there's like, oh Michael, you look way better here. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey Archangels, you look great. I'm gonna I, but, I want you. But no, you can't get them because they're the boss and you can't talk to them. <laughs> and they go, Alright, we're taking our we're taking our Mandela effect and leaving. No, come back! <laughs> I miss you. Just a just a zone that makes you like think. Did I did I remember it? Also, while you're here, uh, your like comp's memory gets corrupted or something, so it no longer remembers weaknesses slash resistance. You know, another way you could fuck with the player really bad uh, is uh, you, you pull a uh, oh what's it called that one GameCube game. Uh, the the horror darkness. one. You pull an eternal darkness, or as you're wandering around there, and it doesn't actually do it, but it says it did it. You get a corrupted save file error. I think that 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 doesn't fall in the Mandela effect zone. I think that's just a weird fourth wall screw. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. I feel like just sticking with like demon weaknesses and stuff being slightly off. Oh wait, especially... like... yeah. What if it starts changing the the time? Like, it only does it in there, mm -hmm. but, like, it starts changing the time that the save files are, like, made on. It slightly changes the amount of maka you had. Oh, that's good. I like that. 9,999! Alright, save again. One! No, no, not like that, but just, like, minor yeah. things. Like, you just keep on pressing start, you all like, 996. You check again. 969. Nice. <laughs> nice. 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 Yeah, I guess, like, any nines or sixes, when you look at them in a menu or, like, again, they switch. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what? I don't remember having 9,000 attack. I, was, I thought it was 6,000. Maybe I got stronger. 
All right. What, what are you doing that you have 6,000 attack? <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> I Yes, I'm level 99 in the first area. What do you, What's your problem? No, we couldn't, we couldn't come up with enough, so sadly we will not have the bonus demon of Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if you're interested in seeing more, like, demon speculation discussion like this, uh, like, say in the comments, come up with ideas. Yeah. Like, we, have, uh, we, have, we have a few in mind for the future. And for this one, we, we specifically, uh, or at least I skied away from, like, really unave like, uneventful creepypasta stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I think we, we all knew going into this that, like, we're not going to do, like, some of the... Some of the big names, but like what like Jeff the Killer, like Jeff yeah. the Killer or uh, Ben Drowned, like we mentioned them to some degree. Jeff is just mentioned now, but <laughs> the the idea was uh, to create take ones that had like it their own story that wasn't really too attached to something else besides mm -hmm. like or yeah something that's more kind of malleable. Yeah, mm -hmm. where that's where like the gaming or the ghost the gamer ghost is like. That is all these stories combined into one or something like that. So if there is something like that out there, like uh, Cursed Whatever the Fucks, Cursed Toasters, they, they all come together There's into one toaster di demon. Di dying Squidwards. Ooh. That was, an actual, that was an actual episode, SpongeBob. Yeah, they, they addressed that. Well, that's interesting. Lost episodes, but that would probably play into the Mandela Effect area. But yeah. <laughs> Do when you're in the Mandela effect area during one cutscene, one of your party members speaks and they're in their beta design. <laughs> That'd be awesome. He, and then you turn to the other person, they have hyper realistic eyes. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's not go too far. Oh, oh, let's not so... get hasty here. <laughs> hey, 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 don't get too goofy now. <laughs> you only have. <laughs> your, your party only consists of you with a. Uh... You with a Tulpa curse. Your party members all equipped with different versions. One of them's a Skinwalker. One of them's a Skinwalker. One of them has Skinwalker. Slenderman is over there. Slenderman is part of your party, and one of you has equipped to you a fucking, uh, uh... One of you is, uh, hit with, a the... What do you have, Polybius? Come on, dude. Calm down. Like, some of the ideas we we had for this was uh, a video on cryptids because cryptids are pretty underrepresented there's surprisingly not that many of them but we got and like a man. couple of them that have shown up have been in like devil kit like demi kids and like just weird shit except for mothman yeah mothman is like the only one that's particularly prevalent yeah mothman is the important cryptid that everyone knows because it's just how big he got. Why is Mothman the one that blew up and not, like, Nessie or Bigfoot? <laughs> Cryptus was one idea. Uh, another one that uh, is a bit lower on the, like, priority list is, like, horror, horror characters. Like, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. uh, Freddy or Jason or the Ooh, cast of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> the Terminator. <laughs> Terminator is uh, going to, maybe going to the public domain. Oh, really? That may be the time. <laughs> also, yes, Bigfoot did appear in uh, the first SMT game, and then never again. Huh. Where did he it's go? A Bigfoot Revival. <laughs> Where'd he go? Bigfoot Revival Lurk, next. <laughs> next on, uh, on this. this. <laughs> on this. When, when Mothman when becomes... Dragon Ball Z. Mothman takes, like, the throne of Yip, and he starts bringing in his cryptid brethren. <laughs> so our time is now. Cryptid boys. S Shin Megami Tensei Mothman prophecies. 